Hey everybody, welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name's Patrick, I'll be your host. Where we left you last time in video 11 was talking about order of operations. Uh, since then, I've gotten these two interior bulkheads glued into place. You can kind of barely make it out there and kind of see a little bit better right there. I'll definitely see here in the back side. So that does it for step 13 on page 13. So moving in to here. And I started putting some of this together when it occurred to me that I'm not really showing anybody anything here by putting it on there and coming back and taking pictures and showing you. That's uh, just pointless. Everyone else could see pictures online on any other format. So I uh, figured we'd go ahead and actually do some of the construction here either silently or with a little bit of music in the background uh, and probably explain some of the some of the steps and the breezing through it uh, as we go along here so well for the most part I've completed step 14 on page 14 uh, the only thing I did not complete on this page and the steps were putting these two um, covers on for the Aegis system four covers uh, two in the back two face in front but we did get these little, you can see right there and right there, you know, these pieces put into place right there with the supports. Um, I would recommend putting the supports in to this little platform piece without glue and then gluing it all in in one, one fell swoop. Um, just being as on this side, I glued that platform in place and then put the little structures, the little uh, support beams in place and they were very difficult to get in so when I on this side just without cement attached the supports to the little platform I put, put that into place glued it glued the little support beams everything went together wonderfully without a hitch no issues now I got these pieces back here the B33 the photo HD 82 and 83 right there they look nice in place um, the photo etch right there, there's a lot of places here in this build where you're going to be finding recesses and you're just going to put these little pieces like these grates into place right there. And one thing I found incredibly easy to do is I take my super thin super thin right here and I get one of these fantastic little tips. Um, you can see, I mean, it's as thin as a syringe. Just put that on there, and you can leave it like that almost indefinitely. I wouldn't say days or weeks, but uh, for your entire modeling session, for the most part, that'll stay on there with the glue without capping it, and you won't get any clogs or anything like that. But after I get those pieces cut out, I'll put them into place, take that, and just throw a drop in there, and a, a drop almost completely floods it. So immediately after that, take a Q-tip, go in there, and just barely touching it will pull up all of the excess glue, still leave the part stuck down. And then you can go in there with the other side of your Q-tip, uh, cotton bud if you're in Europe, and go back with a little bit of the super solvent right there, and that will allow you to get rid of any of the additional CA glue. There are other things that I have also done since then. So, got a lot of 15 done, um, but I figure we pick up here with uh, 15 and go from there uh, the rest of the way on 15. And then we'll go through a lot of these steps, talk about some of these steps as we go, and uh, touch base. But I think a lot of it's just going to be me silently building with a little bit of music in the background. So, uh, also, one other thing I wanted to bring up real quick was I started the tedious process of cutting out the windows. Um, I've had uh, some folks ask how I was going to address these, whether or not I was going to paint it, like the aft bulkhead that's on the uh, deck section for the air traffic control. And that looks good in only its single application. If I were to try to uh, attempt to do that across all of these windows, I don't think I would like the effect as much uh, being that much. So 
I tried a couple things. I had some transparent green styrene that came in one of those random packs of uh, styrene sheet and I tried uh, multiple things here to kind of see what I would like. So I'm going to kind of get some of those hollowed out and take the green styrene and hold it in there and see how that looks. And That looks pretty good. Even take uh, some of the transparent green that I backed up with black styrene. That also looks pretty good. That nice thing about this is it's opaque, so you can't see through that into the rest of this right here. So I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not. But right there, you can see through that. So if there is any backlighting through some of these other windows, you would definitely be able to see in there and see that there's nothing present in there. So if you black that with bat, uh, black styrene or black paint, you're going to get kind of a green hue that is opaque and dark and you can't see through. It's not a bad effect. That right there looks like they are holding some weird kind of stage presentation in there where the green lights are the only ones that are functioning because that is very bright green. Um, and then I happen upon this, and I think this is going to be the way I go. Um, some time ago on Amazon, I purchased sheets of this kind of multicolored reflective transparent something or the other. I'm not even really sure what to call it. Um, one, I like the, this color because it's slightly bluish. Two, it's very reflective. And three, if I put that and back that with some gray. I get a great color where it's just a little bit of bluish greenish and kind of turquoise. It's not too dark and it's not too bright. And I think that'll stand out nicely against the uh, the gray paint of the rest of the superstructure. So this is what I'll be going with. This right here is not a bad backup though and if you can't get a hold of this then I definitely would recommend I would recommend going with the green backed with black and that's what I would have done had I not had this as I probably would have gone with this right there just because it's dark opaque and you get a bit of a green hue to to where those windows are and it's also as long as you keep it nice and shiny it'll look like glass uh, but uh, for the most part in answer to any questions about what I was going to do here, that is it right there. I'm cutting these out, and I'm going to put this in there and make it look like windows all the way across. That looks pretty convincing, especially for the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to doing the build here. Like I said, I'll be probably, in fact, I'll just call it right now. I'm going to do that silently with a little bit of music in the background, um, and I'm probably sped up a little bit, so I'm not wasting hours and hours of your day on one single video. So. Be back here in just a sec.
so for the most part that was page 15, step 15. Um, I still have two D34s to put on there. It looks like those are just the um, like megaphone uh, speaker things. Um, as I'm going along also, there's certain things that I'm leaving off. And just as a good reminder, in blue pen, I'm kind of making a list of what it is and where they're at that I have blown by. Um, and that's mainly just because I want to paint these slightly different tone than this. And I mean very slight, but enough to let you know they're different. Um, leave that off so I can paint this because that is the same non-skid color as the rest of the decking. I checked online. Um, and then that right there, because that right there is chrome. So I want to do uh, that in chrome. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get on with D34 and get those two parts put on, uh, uh, you know, off camera without uh, boring you about that. Probably also this little photo edge bracket that goes right there. Um, and then uh, we'll just move in right into um, step 16, page 16. So. Step 16, page 16, pretty much wrapped up except for again the stuff in blue. And whoops, I forgot to circle that in blue. Technically, different part numbers in B7 and B8, but times two it on here, just interest to save in space. Um, there are certain things you did not see me do on screen. So that would be that. That was pretty quick and easy. Folded that, was able to tack it on there pretty quick. Um, these right here, you may have seen me fiddling with it uh, just a touch. They are a pain in the rear, big time. But managed to 
Uh, the first one, when it messed up over here, I was able to strip all the CA off of it and have another go at it. So that worked out well. This right here is three parts. I'm serious. This piece of photo etch right here next to my fingernail is three parts. I wasn't about to try to do that on camera. If you have any questions about uh, how I went about it, um, maybe if I've got any spare leftover parts, I can try to run a short later on on putting that together. That was not easy. Um, but I will say this. Start with the B6 and B7, a connection. After you've got those in place, then put on B20. Um, B6, 7 connection should use super thin, or that's what I did. And then B20, after these were dry and secured, I was able to add a little uh, microscopic dollop of the medium CA right there and able to just slide that on. But that was difficult. Uh, I found this right here. Um, it's kind of like a larger, more forceful version of forceps. Uh, at any rate, yeah, very fiddly, very small, tiny. So this little doohickey right here, number 14, I'm only, I only made one. I'll make the other one when it comes to attaching it. It's right there, four pieces. Was not too bad. Only one piece of the photo etch, just two 90 degree angle bends, right around two little swivel plugs. You get that in place, then you throw a little bit of medium on there, let it cure, glue that on the 61, glue that in, and cement all of that right into place up front. So that was that. But at any rate, page 16, step 16, done. So we'll move on to 17. This one doesn't look terrible. These. One thing I wanted to bring up, uh, this video almost didn't happen for uh, at least a couple more weeks. One of the things I don't think that uh, we addressed often enough on YouTube or in such uh, almost real life forums uh, like this is modeling mojo. Um, it's funny to say uh, mojo, however, um, there's certain times and points that come up uh, during the assembly of a model, especially one that could be particularly challenging, and this one is uh, fairly challenging. It's not terrible, but it's not easy uh, by any account. And uh, something gets frustrating. In the past, I've known to push through it, and what happens when I push through it is 95% um, of the time, I end up making things worse and get more frustrated. Uh, and then something either goes up on the uh, shelf of doom to be a shelf queen and just sit there until uh, finally just throw it in the, throw it in the rubbish. Uh, or, um, you know, 5% of the time I can push through that frustration. The folks that actually know me personally uh, know that I'm a passionate person and as a result I attempt tend to have a, a temper flare if something uh, repeatedly isn't working out the way it should be. Um, so one thing that I've had to find myself doing is stepping away. Um, something gets frustrating, putting it down and stepping away and thinking about it, um, sometimes for uh, 24 hours, sometimes for up to a week. Uh, and after I think about it, uh, I can usually reinvigorate that mojo and go back to it, especially if I've got a solution worked out that I'm pretty sure will work. Um, so that that did happen, and that point in time is coming up in this video, but uh, also that point in time is one of the reasons why this video was so long in the making from the last time I posted a video, which is about a week ago. So um, 
I really appreciate you sticking it out and being patient and waiting for this next installment. Um, if you're here, of course, you did wait, so I appreciate that. Uh, and again, uh, just understand as things get frustrating or tend to get really difficult, there's going to be times where I have to set it down and move away from it for about a day in order to proceed. So just uh, wanted to give you that quick public service announcement. With that, we'll get back to the regular order of the video. Finish step 17 and page 17 there. Pretty straightforward, pretty quick and easy to do. 
except for these parts right here, which are C6 and D27, uh, particularly C6. And there's five individual ladder rungs that you have to bend and then stick them directly into the side of this superstructure piece back here. Um, the holes that they've already got molded in aren't deep enough. Otherwise, the rungs would stick out like three scale feet from the side of the ship. And then also, on top of that, they're just flimsy and they looked bad. So I wrestled with them for a little bit. And uh, as I mentioned earlier on in this video about uh, getting to frustrating points of time and taking a certain amount of time, um, that was the point at where I almost... Uh, decided to put this aside for a couple of weeks while I regained control over uh, some of my frustrations dealing with some of the photo watch in this model. Um, luckily, I put it down. When I got to that, I finally just put it down and said, you know what, I, I, I got to think this over. Uh, I can't push forward or I'm going to get way too frustrated. I did that, and the very next day I came up with an idea of ripping all of that out, all of the existing stuff out, using some CAD bonder and removing all of that work, um, the good and the bad. And I've backed, got 0.3 millimeter brass rod. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's incredibly thin. Um, but I was able to take this and bend it right there on my photo edge bending tool. I was able to make five identically sized individual ladder rungs that are actually circular and look a lot better than the photo edge. So those are in place now. Hopefully that's showing up. Well, ladder was slightly tricky, but not terrible. But those ladder rungs are the uh, gotchas there for that step. We'll be moving on to step 18 and page 18. And as you can see, I've already got some things marked down that I'm going to be setting aside and not adding at this point in time. So I can paint the, uh, the non-skid color on this. I'll also get the regular uh, vertical Sorry if it's all painting. Um, one thing then, maybe someone who's uh, served on these ships can give me a little info on. I'm having trouble locating anything about this particular little platform area right back here on any online pictures and resources. It just looks like it's not a area of the ship that's photographed very often. Um, I did find a couple of pictures of the USS John McCain that has that on there. Um, it's very, very difficult to make out and see, but at least I know it's there along with those individual ladder rungs. Nothing stood out on any kind of overhead shots or anything like that where this would be painted in the non-skid right here. I'm not really sure what this piece is for, or at least I do know it's there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attach it and just paint the entire thing the same color as the uh, rest of the vertical surfaces on this. Uh, so I should be able to get all of this stuff on here. Um, special note, K9 kind of buried in the details. It says both sides, so it's going to have to go over here and there. And then over here, um, again, we've got a lot of tiny little parts that are kind of buried in the details here um, on the drawing, but uh, we'll get those on. It doesn't look too terrible moving on, except we'll be pulling off and keeping this off, adding those, um, adding these little pieces here in the sides. And that will be close to about where we put the brakes on for this build video here. I'm going to get some of this stuff in there as well. Um, of course, excluding any of these little staircases uh, or these little fences right now they're going to go into parts that uh, we're not attaching but these right here we'll get those on we'll get these on so um, and as we go we'll continue work on that right there but I'll be doing that off camera because taking care of all those little windows is incredibly tedious so 
and go ahead and get to work on step 18, page 18, uh, again and fast forward.
Okay, so that's it for step 18, page 18. You can see I left off these assemblies here, these assemblies here, all six of them, and uh, S8, S9, S11, and S13. These get painted white. These get painted white, and of course the hose reels get painted their own color. Um, these are going to be going down, in a, and all of this is also going down in an area where it's going to be getting the non-skid paint, um, that uh, general darker deck color. So I want to make sure I get that painted down there first prior to putting anything down. So these will be painted separately uh, off off the model or off of the superstructure at first. And once they're painted, um, and after this is painted, we'll stick those in place. Um, same thing here with these two D20s and this photo which ladder right here. Um, the rest of this though went down pretty pretty simply enough. Um, I don't know if you saw this or not, but uh, part uh, D66 right here right there it is not the easiest part to get put in place um, again the photo wedge isn't the isn't spectacular um, it was definitely strong enough at this point in time to take care of it and you know you know hold up but just again not great photo wedge so it was kind of a pain to get put in place the bending of it wasn't too terrible though but uh, everything else pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I got a little bit of super glue, CA uh, cleanup to do right here. Um, so probably do that here, and we'll also go ahead and get into step 19, page 19 here. Again, I'm not going to be adding um, this assembly, but I will be adding these parts, uh, these right here, which go up underneath there. Um, and in addition, then these assemblies look like they can all get added and put into place uh, here as well. So.
got uh, page 19, step 19, and your instructions knocked out except for anything that uh, circled in blue. That should be them. There we go. So, looks like I might have just a touch of photo etch. Now we got to put in looks like these right here. We'll go over there. Just more rungs. I might uh, see if I can figure something else out besides the uh, lousy photo etch that it looks like they've got uh, provided for us. But at this time, right now, the main thing is, is we've got uh, assembly there at 20 put into place, assembly 19 put into place on both sides, and this assembly of 18 put into place on both sides. Additionally, we got all these supports put underneath these two structures right there which is there um, this right here the instruction calls out and looks like one of these antennas and that is actually not put into place until the next step which is right here so that right there goes both sides but for whatever reason they drew it in right there no problem it just looked off to me because uh, I you know, looking ahead, I didn't figure we had that going yet. So, and two uh, Q2 and Q3 up top here as well. I chose to put them in because they're going to be masked off because they're also going to get some non skid uh, deck gray versus uh, what the uh, vertical surfaces are getting. So, now I got to mark these parts down. We're going to go ahead and look into 20 real quick. Um, you know what? Never mind. Scratch that. We're going to hold off on that. That looks pretty uh, labor intensive and I just kind of like to get something out there for everybody uh, for the time being. So we will continue on uh, step 20 in the next build video. So it will be step 20. We'll do some of 23 and some of 24 and we'll get those in place onto that main superstructure. Uh, bear in mind we're leaving step 21 and 22 off right now because we're going to need that flat we're going to need this flat space on here to clamp this down to the hull. So what we'll end up doing is when I uh, get all the windows and everything here squared away we'll get this sprayed at the same time as we spray this so the color matches and then we'll be able to get those and uh, get that piece put into place after this is mounted onto the actual ship or onto the deck in the hall. So, uh, again, next video is going to be step 20, step 23, and step 24, and step 25 where those get mounted down. And then uh, after that, uh, we're going to work on the painting and the parts that we had to leave off and getting those put back on. So. Um, it looks like uh, video 12 mainly will be in maybe uh, three different parts, A to 9, B, which is the uh, steps 20 through 25, and then C, which is going to be all the uh, painting of parts that are left off and getting those put onto the superstructure to get this painted as well. So I um, really appreciate you all following along with me. I know this has been a long video in particular. Hopefully, I'm trying to get these cut down and sized right so that, uh, one, they're not overly long, maybe hour long at max. Uh, and then, two, just make sure that, uh, you know, we don't have just a, a video every week of, uh, you know, 40 different build videos for this thing to take up an entire year. This build won't take me an entire year to f uh, figure out and get put together, so... Rather not uh, just waste the space, uh, your virtual YouTube space with 40 or 50 different videos. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to put those in the feedback on this on this video. If there's something I'm doing wrong video-wise, please feel free to point it out. If there's a part or something like that that I misrepresent with my words. Uh, I appreciate also pointing out what that part is actually called. Uh, 
as always all we can do is get better and that's definitely my goal here I really appreciate you joining me and thank you for watching